Hello, good morning, everyone. So we planned, we starting exactly at 10, and we'll stick to that. Story 10.30, and we'll stick to that. I'm just um, doing some house um, um, rules. Um, if you can hear me, kindly give me some thumbs up so that I'm sure that um, everything is um, properly set up. Good, 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 good. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Mame. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, everyone. So I believe that um, all of you can hear me. So you are welcome to our Microsoft 365 Planner Masterclass and the essence of today's training and a couple of um, some to come is to emphasize some of the productivity tools that you have within your Microsoft investment. It's also supposed to give you some cases um, as seen work cases to be able to help you harness it to the full benefit of your team in terms of productivity and all. So I wouldn't want to take too much of, of your time. Um, Irabna Benson is going to be the one to take us through the session and I'll hand over to her in a minute. So you are most welcome. And like I said, if you have any questions, just drop it on the chat and we'll respond. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Tete. A very good morning to you all once again. I am sharing my screen shortly. Uh, once you can see it, please just uh, give me a thumbs up so at least I can be sure that everybody can see my screen. Okay. As I'm waiting for you to indicate that, let me just give a brief uh, background or intro, and then we'll just delve straight into the main aspects of this training. So at least for those of us who are already on the Microsoft 365 platform, we have come across the planner application within our Microsoft 365 uh, suite of apps. And so you go there by accessing that side. You do the portal.office.com. You enter your organization credentials and you should come to the main uh, home screen. And then you can see your apps here. You can go to all apps and then you should see the planner application available there for you to use. So um, what is this planner application? Planner is more or less a mini project management tool or group task management tool um, from Microsoft to enable us to be able to manage tasks amongst uh, ourselves as, as colleagues. If there is any project that has been organized, we just need to be able to list all the tasks assigned to individuals. Or maybe within your department, there are a number of activities that you need to engage in over the course of the week or the month. All those activities can be listed out on the planner application and assigned to the respective individuals for them to assess. Now, I believe most of you can see my screen. I saw a number of thumbs up, so I will just delve fully into this application. into this session now. So just um, to reiterate, um, as we go on, um, we will be taking questions at the end of the lesson. However, a QA and a um, chat is available. So if in the course of the training you have any questions, you can drop that question in the Q&A area and then um, members of the technical team will assist in answering those questions. So this is my landing page when I open the planner application. Um, if you try it at your end and you haven't really used the planner application, this area may appear blank for you, don't worry. Um, after this training, when we all have um, a good grasp of it and we start to use it more in our organizations, you should be seeing some more plans pop up in this area for you. So let's just do a quick overview of some of the things we are seeing on the screen, and then we will move into the main aspects. So we can see 
a navigation bar on the left portion of our screen here, which enables us to move to different aspects of the planner application. So the first thing we see at the top here is the new plan, which is where we can go to create this new plan that we intend um, for use by our teammates. OK, and it's one of the areas we will look at. Now we also have the hub session, which happens to be the main landing page we get to when we open up the planner application. From here, you will see all uh, plans that have been created, whether you have created the ones that you are a part of, you'll see them all listed over here. Now, there could be a point in time where you are part or have been added to a lot of plans. So you can easily pin the particular um, plans that are very key to you to the top so that it's easy to assess them. So just by clicking these three dots you see next to the plan, you can click the pin option and then it puts that up here for you. So this area is giving you the uh, some sort of summary graph of that particular plan and progress on its activities. Now below the hub, you see the assigned to me section. So as team members, this is where we usually come to, to see all tasks or activities that have been assigned to us. So this would show all the tasks that have been assigned to you across different plans. So you see them here and you can easily assess and then just work on them and indicate your progress from here. Now you will notice here that you can see the pinned um, plans that I had in here for easy access. And then you would have the all section here, which shows all plans that you are a part of. Now, just to add that the planner application is available as a web application, which is what I have opened right now. And then there is a mobile version, so you can easily assess your tasks on the go and update them as and when you need to. So um, because this webinar, I usually, I can't see your face and get direct response. If at any point in time, you can just give me a thumbs up so at least I know that we are still on the call and following. So now let's just delve into the main aspects of this training. So for this, we are going to be creating a new plan. So let's we'll click the new plan that we see here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the planner application can be used from anything from managing a project or some mini projects that you have to just managing activities that you have to engage in within a department. So if there is any activities within the month of January, for instance, that an IT department needs to take, you can have that listed out in Planner and assign to individuals. Now, when I click the new plan, you would notice that there is an option here that says new blank plan. And there are some templates that are available. There are some templates that are available on the screen here, as you can see. So there is a simple plan. There's a project management template, a software development template, employee onboarding. So basically what these templates help you to do is it creates that plan for you with some uh, predefined groupings and activities already in them for you to just build upon and add your own tasks and activities, realign the groupings if need be. So you don't need to necessarily create everything from scratch. Um, for the purposes of this training, we'll start with a new blank plan. Should we have some time, maybe we'll open up one of the templates just so we see how those look. So you click new blank plan, and then we see the option here to name our plan. So um, this whole training, masterclass training, involved a number of planning activities before uh, taking off today. So for the purposes of this training, I'm just going to be using the entire tasks that were, uh, the tasks we engaged in before organizing this plan for this demo. 
So let's say for this, I want to name this um, planner masterclass. Planner masterclass training 2024. OK, so this is the name I'm choosing to give to this. So this can be anything that is it describes enough what you need this plan for. So at least anyone who is added to it can easily tell what plan they have been added to. Now, below that title area, you can see the option to add to an existing group. So what happens is whenever you create a plan, you are more or less creating a group of people who are supposed to be working together on something. Now, within the Microsoft 365 application, a lot of other apps, a lot of other apps on the platform give you the opportunity to create these groups. So an example is the Teams application that you use. So whenever you create, let's say, a departmental uh, a team on the Teams application that has created a group. So if you need to create a plan for your software team, for instance, you don't need to now go and add all the software members over again. Once that group already exists, you can easily find and add that group to it. Now, because we want to know how to add members for now, I'm not going to add a group to it, but this just to let you see that these are some of the groups I could attach to it. And then the advantage it gives you is it allows all the members in that team to automatically be added to the plan you are creating. Now, below that, we see the option to indicate some privacy and sensitivity if that aspect has been enabled on your tenant. Now, the privacy is indicating public and private. Public makes this plan accessible to everybody within your organization. Private, on the other hand, only makes this available to the members of the plan only. So for this, I'm going to stick to making this private. And then I can click Create. So once you click Create, it starts to create your plan for you to be able to make use of it. Now, when you create a plan, this is the landing page it gives you. Let's quickly look at some of the items we are seeing here, which we will delve into further. But just to give us an idea of where or what each of these items we are seeing is. So at the very top of the screen, we can see some menu items. There's the grid. We'll see all these in full force once we add tasks to the plan we have created. So we see the grid which more or less just list out our activities for us in a great format. So we can just edit everything on one line easily. Then we have the board, which is usually the default area that the planner um, ends up in. And then we have chats, which would show us some um, reports in graphical format of the various tasks that we have created within the system. So more or less some summary report available to us. And then we have the schedule option, which will give us the various tags or activities we have created and just show them out on a calendar to enable us to easily see the duration or expected duration of those. The expected duration of those activities. Now, when I move to my far right corner, I can see the members option here, which is where we would add members, which is where we we'll add members to our plan. And then we also have the filter area and then the group by bucket, group by area, which would allow us to be able to properly organize and filter the tags or activities we create in the way that we want them. So these are all areas I'll delve into further. So I'm just touching on them just for now. So just to make sure I'm not losing any of you, as it stands now, we have seen how to access the Planner app from our main Microsoft 365 portal. 
we have had a brief overview of the items we see on the planner application. And as it stands now, we've been able to create a plan and seen the various items that we have on the plans landing page. So now that we've created the plan, now we move on to adding our tasks to it. Now, in order to have your items organized or grouped for easy access and for you to easily understand what each of these tags or how these tags are related, Planner offers what they refer to as the bucket. So for each of the tasks that we are creating, we can group them under various buckets to know which tags are related to each other and all that. Now, when it comes to the bucket, you are not limited to a specific way to use the bucket. So you could, for instance, um, group the activities if the plan is for, let's say, the entire software department, for, inst for instance, and you have units within this department, you could group or you could use the various unit names as the bucket so that every unit knows the tasks that apply to them. If you have some weekly activities also within a month, you can group these activities per week so that you would have those bucket titles as the various weeks. OK, so at the end of this, I'll show you one for one just to let you see the different ways where we can use um, those buckets. So for the purpose of this training, and I mentioned that I was going to use the entire activity list for over the course of planning this masterclass. Now, what it is is that to organize this event, there were a number of departments that had to collaborate to make this possible. So we had the software team, we had the graphics team, we had the marketing team. So for me, I'm going to be grouping my tasks per department or teams. So I have software team, so changing the bucket name is just as simple as just tapping on that bucket area and then you can just change the name. So I have software team and then I can just come here, click the add new bucket and then create another bucket. So I have my graphics team. And then I had the marketing team. OK. So if there are more buckets you need to add, you can just go ahead and add them. Now I am going to add the tasks under the various um, buckets. So for the software team, for instance, they had to discuss and agree on topic. Let's say at the event date, there was that that needed to be done. You can just tap enter on your keyboard and that should create the task for you. Or you can hit the add task option here and then it gives you the opportunity to add another task to this bucket. Now, the software team also had to create training content for the chosen topic. So I'll just try and add about two contents each under the buckets, just so we have an idea of them. Um, the graphics team, for instance, had to design the flyer and events brochure. Now, there is something I want to point out. So for every event or for every activity that you are creating, there is even more you can do or more information you can add for each of those task items. Now, when I click the, let me add that and click that particular, click that particular task or activity, I see this pop up on my screen, giving me the option to add even more information about the task. So for this particular task, for instance, there are some sub activities or checklists that I need the team to actually take note of to 
make sure that they have completed this. So for this, for instance, um, they had to get content from the marketing team. Just have to click out of it and it gives you another opportunity to add another item. And then they also had to get the training outline from the software team. So these are some particular activities or checklists that had to be handled um, for this particular task. So we'll see right next to it, you see the option to show on card. So when that is ticked, then it will just give this summary information or this information on the cards. Okay, so let me just click out of this. Then we can see here that the activity we created for the graphics team is showing the checklists items that need to be completed for this activity. Let me add another item here. For the graphics team, let's say review and approve designs. Review and approve designs. And then we can add that as well. And then for the marketing team, let's um, indicate here that they had to, let's say, create the webinar link. They had to create the webinar link and then they also had to compile the list of clients to invite. Compile list of clients to invite. And then they had to send out the invite emails as well. So send out invite emails. Now under the send out invite emails, um, let's say the head has some draft that has been crafted and that is what they want the team to use. You'd see here that there is an option to add an attachment. So the host could click the add attachment option and then they get that option to add that from a computer, whether it's within Teams or whether there's a link to some URL, some website or something they need to draw their attention to. So for this purpose, I'm choosing from computer. I think I have some dummy document here that I want to add. And then I click open. And then I've added that attachment. So this can be used either way. So from the team lead or supervisor point of view, I could attach a document that's supposed to serve as a guide for my team members to follow. From a team member point of view, you could also attach that file as some form of evidence for the work you have done for your boss to see that. So I add the attachment. Now I've been clicking out of the pop-outs to close it. I can also easily just close it from the dialogue option that I see here. So, so far we've created the buckets. We've added some task items in there for this um, plan that we have created. Now we are going to move on to adding members and assigning members to the tags that we have created. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that when you come to this top right corner, the first item we are seeing here is members. This is where we can come and add our members for. So you can click this members option here and then you see the option to be able to start entering the name of people you want to add to this now mind you because this is connected to your entire m365 platform what is there that is the at active directory it can easily help you to pull the names of people in your organization that you need to add now if you also remember i pointed out when we were creating the plan that if you you can also avoid the process of adding members if you already have an existing team to work with 
So if we had chosen one, then we'll just have all those people already part of this plan from the beginning. So for this, I am adding some colleagues. Then let me add that. Let me also add the same path. Let me add my boss to it as well. Okay, so these are the people I've added to my plan so far who I can assign tasks to. Now, mind you, if you have not added anybody as a member to this plan, you cannot assign a task to them. You can only assign tasks in this plan to people who are members of this task. So you're at liberty to add more people, but for me, these five people are enough. I am done with this for now. Okay. So now I can come to the tasks that I have created. So let's say for this create trading content, I open this up and I see the option to assign. Okay. So once I click the assign option here, I would see the names of the people I intend to, um, I can share this particular item with or assign this item to, sorry. So um, just so I receive the mails and show you some of those notifications, let me assign this for now to the account I am using for this training, that's MICTS training. So I am done. This for this is just one account that is tied to this. Now for the next one, you can assign multiple people to the same tax. So for this, um, I'm assigning my boss, I'm assigning Obed, I'm assigning Irabna to this tax. So these three members are in charge of discussing and agreeing on the topic for the event. Now, before I forget, let me point out that you would also see that there is some start date and due date options available here for you. So if the particular activity is expected to start at some particular time or day, you can indicate that over here. So I just select the date and this is due, let's say by the 26th. So I'm expecting that by the 26th, this particular activity would have been done. Now, you also see at the top here that you can set a priority level for the task that you are creating. So for this particular activity, um, let me say I'm marking it as important because it's very key to have a topic for us to be able to even have a training in the first place. Now, if this needs to repeat at any point in time, you can indicate that option here as well. As the person assigning the task, if there is any description or note I want the team to know about, I can also include that here. Remember, I've already showed that you can add a checklist of items if need be. You can add an attachment showing some particular action points that need to be taken note of. So once we are done with this, we can just click the close button or just click anywhere outside this dialog box and that is added. So you also do not have to worry about saving everything. Once you are typing it, it is being saved automatically for you. So we've been able to now attach or assign people to the tasks by first adding them as members. We've added members, we've assigned tasks to people, and then we've been able to set a priority level and then due dates for our activities. Let me just add a few due dates here for some of the other events. And then we will just use that to check some other things. So let me give this, for instance, the MICTS training account. And then this particular one also due, let's say, by 2nd February. Okay. So 
I, I'm not doing everything, just at least I'm sure that by now, hopefully we are all getting um, a hang of it. Okay, so now that I've added the various activity items, I have added a member to my plan or members to my plan. I have also assigned these tasks to individuals. Now, as a team member, okay, so please, for, for those I've assigned some of the tasks to you, you can just help me and um, just indicate from your end um, some level of progress so that it shows up on my end for the team to see. Okay. So just as they are trying to at least indicate their progress or the activities, I want to just quickly point out how this app also interrelates with some of the other apps on your m 3 5 platform. Example is the Outlook application. So when I open up this Outlook app, for instance, I have that opened already. I see here some notifications that Planner is giving me on the activities that um, have been assigned to me. Now, so for instance, with this, um, once I was added to the plan, you get a notification first and foremost. So usually by default, these notifications are enabled for all of us. However, I will show us where, assuming you are not getting some of these notifications, where you can enable and see them. So once I was added to the task, I see the option here that I have been added to a task. Now, um, this is how some of the emails look like when you are assigned this activity. So the first one I showed was letting me know I had been added to a plan. And then these are some of the, this is one email showing me some tasks I've been assigned to. So this is for one of the um, other ones. So I can see that I've been assigned this uh, particular task. So you will get these notifications within your email. Now for the mobile application, when you are assigned a task, you usually get that notification or push notification also on your mobile phone. So. As a group member, I've been assigned a task. I've started working on it. I need to come and indicate some progress so that my boss and then the team members can see that I am not just idling by. I'm actually doing the work I've been assigned to do. So when I come as a team member, I can just click on the item, just like we did when we were entering the due dates. And then you would see some option here that says progress. So you can indicate here if it's an activity you have completed, you just select the complete option. And then this closes that up here. So within the software team activities, I can see that there is a completed task. So just so the place doesn't look clumsy, it just moves it down into um, a, a closed up area. I bet you can just expand and see it. And then this particular item has been canceled out. Now, for this event, I can see that there is some icon that is now showing up. With all the others, we see it's just looking plain, but there is an, an icon that is showing up here because one of the team members has indicated that this activity is in progress. Now, as a team member, there's also this option here, comment. So, the whole planner application, like we mentioned, because it's a group task management, it also allows you as a team to be able to collaborate and communicate when it comes to the tasks that have been assigned. So you'll see that there is a comment section underneath each of the activities. So at any point in time, if there is any question that you need to be answered in relation to that activity, you can come and type it in here. So please, when are we available to have this discussion? I can come and respond. Um, let's do Friday. OK, and I send that and then would we'll all be able to see it as members of the group. So as a team member, it's as easy as just clicking the activity that has been assigned to you. 
you can come and indicate your progress here. If there are some evidence you need to attach by way of document, you can click the Add Attachment and choose that document and attach it. If you need to add any comments for the team to see, you can just do that from within here. So you don't need to move out of this application, go to Teams and go and ask your question and then come back here. You can just do all that from within this area. OK, so now that we have created some tasks, I mentioned that once we have filled this area up a bit, we'll be able to see the other areas in full view and see how that whole part works. Now, just before I move there, let me just point out that in order to make your work easy, please mind you, you are not exactly stuck once you create some activities under the various buckets. You can easily drag and drop the activities to any other bucket if you need to. OK, so for instance, you could create all your tasks before you create your buckets. And then when you are done, you just drag and drop the items to the respective buckets or grouping area. So now let's look at the grid. How is that looking over here now that we have tasks in it? When we click the grid, we can now see that all the activity items we created are just listed out in this grid format for us. As I mentioned, this grid format just makes it easy for you to just edit all the items simply in one line. So I can easily add my start dates very easily from here, and then I'm good to go. If I also want to change the bucket or the grouping that an activity was placed under, I can just click this drop down arrow and then I select that option there. So this is the grid view. The board view is where we came from, which is usually the default view that you are seeing. And then we have the chats. So this chat area is more or less just a report, a graphical report showing you progress on the activities that you have created within the planner application. So over here, we can at first glance just see that there are six tags left. We have five that have not been started at all. We have one that is in progress. None of those activities are late. And then one has been completed. Now over here, we see this chart also just showing us the number of activities that we have in each bucket or each grouping area. In my case, I use the various teams or departments as those grouping areas. So we can see the number of activities we have for each of them. And then we can also see the color coding that is corresponding to this chart here. So I just hover on it and I see that within the software team, one item has been completed. One of them is in progress. The graphics team hasn't started any of their activities and the marketing team has also not started any of their activities. OK, now just below that, we also see a report showing the various activities by the priority types. So the number of items that are important, ones with medium and the low priority. Now, this last area, which is showing the number of tags that have been assigned to members can be a very good way for you to easily tell if some of your staff have been overpowered with work, for instance, or if you have a particular employee with very little tax on their hand or some with a lot of tax or activities on their hand. So over here, I can easily see the number of activities I've assigned to this MICTS training person. And then we can see that that person has completed one activity and one is pending. And then we can also see the progress for all the other members who were assigned tasks. OK, so this is the chat area giving us that summary reports in graphical format of the activities that we have created. Now, when we come to the shadow, as I mentioned, this is more or less letting us see the duration of a particular activity on a calendar. So we can see at first glance that this particular activity discussing and agreeing on the topic 
is supposed to span over a period of two days to be done. The creating the training content is just happening on one, uh, it's supposed to just happen on one day, reviewing and approving designs. Now, because there are more here, if I click this, reviewing and approving designs is also happening here. Okay. Now, once this is done, now let's go to a few things by way of the filter and the grouping bucket. So I can point out um, some other things here. Okay. So now let's come to the filter section. Now you don't always need to open up and see your entire list of activities if you have well over, let's say, 20 activities and tasks in there, and you can see all of them at once, it may get difficult to figure out which is which. So you can easily filter and just move to seeing specific um, activities based on um, some filter area. So for instance, we see here the option to view tasks, let's say, that are due today. We don't have any tasks due today. Um, let's say any tasks that are due within this week. And then we can see that this particular, it filters it to let us see that this particular event within the software team is due this week. Okay. So now one thing I would want us to also note is that it allows you to select multiple items. So if you've selected this week, you click next week as well, it will show you items for both of them. So if if you need that item for just one of them, you make sure you've just clicked it again. If it's selected, just click it again, and then it would show you only that um, filter, um, only for that filter. Okay. Now we also see that we have the options to filter based on the priority level. If we want to also filter based on the progress. So if I want to see the number of activities in progress, I can do that as well. We have the option to do it by labels, by the various buckets, and then even the ones that have been assigned. So I click here and I filter by the unassigned ones, and I can see all the activities that have been unassigned so that I assign them accordingly. Okay, now the group by area, also more or less works in a, in a similar format to the filter. Now, as it stands now and by default, it groups the activities based on the bucket areas which we created. Now, if I choose to view it by assigned to option, then I can see that it has now grouped each of those activities based on who I assigned it to. Now over here, I will just point something out. So a lot of times when we are creating the tags within our planner application, there's the temptation by default to create the buckets based on who we are assigning it to. Now, if you create that based on who you are assigning it to and you don't actually assign to anybody using the assign option, then they are not going to be getting any notification emails that you've assigned the tax to them. They would only need to open, they can only open the planner and see that, oh, these activities are under my name. However, when you assign the task and then you come to the group by option and then you select the assigned to, then now you would see the various activity items grouped based on the people you've assigned it to. Now, from here, you can also easily see the ones that have been unassigned. And if you want to avoid the process of coming here to click the person you want to assign it to, then you select their name. When you come to this group by and then assign to option, you can easily just drag and drop these items to assign them to individuals. So once you've assigned a few items to people, you have their names here. You just drag and drop it, and then this easily assigns it to those individuals. So, so far, we have um, assigned our various tasks to individuals. 
We have also looked at how, as a team member, you can update on progress to um, on progress of the task or activity that you were assigned. We have also looked at the various view options here. That's the grid view, the chat view, the shadow view, we have looked at that. And then we've also seen the filter options that we have here so that we can just filter down to specific areas or specific items we want to see. And then we've also seen the group by option. And particularly, I dwell on the assign to option because that makes it very easy to just drag and drop and assign our tasks to individuals, okay? Now, even under the group by area, you can also easily group, pair the various um, progress, the due dates, any priority levels and labels as well. So, Planner basically makes it easy for you to create those tasks and then easily assign them to people. And even in assigning and grouping the tasks, it's just as simple as just dragging and dropping them around and then you can work with it. Now, as a team member, I mentioned that by default, you'll be getting your emails or you'll be getting your notifications via email like I showed you earlier. However, if you are not getting those emails, you can come to the settings option here, this icon, gear icon you are seeing on your top right corner. You click that and you see notifications. So you can click the notifications and then you would see these options here. So if for you it's unchecked, you can check it so that you avoid any instances of not being aware of any activity that has been assigned to you. So you get your email notification to make you aware something has been assigned to you. So for this, when someone assigns a tax to me, you see that this sends via email and if you have the mobile application, it also gives you a mobile notification. If you also want to keep this on for a task that assigned to me is late or is due, you also have that option and then you save it. So this is basically how to create the act, create a plan, add your various activities to a plan, add members to your plan, assign members to these activities that you have created, grouping your activities simply by dragging and dropping, or assigning your activities to individuals simply by dragging and dropping them as well. So I think for now, I will end this here with all that I've shown. I think I mentioned in the beginning that I'll just show you some, let me just show one um, activity for instance. Let me switch this back to bucket. So this is some dummy um, plan that has been earlier created where for this it has been grouped per weekly activity. So I've just labeled the buckets per week. And then we have another one here where this has been labeled per some other group. And so this is for a deployment. I think for those of you who've um, engaged or helped with your M365 deployments, you saw something similar when it came to the activity list we gave you. So this is something like this that you have. So I think this will end the demo for now. I, I believe the technical team has answered quite a number of questions but I will hand over to them if there are any further um, comments. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, I think I think it would be good we give a, a Ravna a clap, right? <laughs> she's, done, she's done marvelously well and uh, done justice to the topic. Um, someone may ask, what is the relevance of this? It's very easy. We've just come out of strategic meeting at the end of the year, everybody planned, but uh, managers have always have challenge tracking activities that they have assigned to their subordinates and reporting on it. And sometimes they miss their targets because over the years, uh, what happened is that the plan is drawn, but then before they realize the year is over, it has not been done. Um, if you have any question, we encourage you to type it in the chat or put in the Q&A. We have barely 10 minutes to end. We want to make sure that we don't go beyond an hour for this so that the technical team will answer it. 
Um, we've seen a few hands up. We will try and see whether we can use the five minutes to answer so that we also don't keep people too far, but as much as possible, type it and then we'll answer it. So typically we will use this to easily assign tasks to our subordinate, get them notified, and it is very easy for them to update their status. It's going to let you avoid that long report writing. You assign a task, the person just click on in progress or done or put a comment and that is it. So when you are coming to meeting, people don't need to prepare a long report that takes half day or two days to report just to realize that it is late. You come to the meeting and it is just the dashboard and the dashboard become a focus. So I've seen some customers using it. When you come, your boss will say, don't bring any report. Just come and watch. We project the dashboard. We know all those who have done the activities. We know those who are late. We know those who are in progress and all that so that there's focus on getting the job done instead of bothering ourselves in people writing report or that sort of thing. And then we are also able to filter so that we're able to filter to know activity that is now coming up, activities assigned to people or any other way so that the manager as a manager just right at the top of the click, you're able to know how your team is performing and the data analytics is very awesome. And we are also able to export the data into Excel or other formats to be able to send it out. We think it's a very good tool that the team leaders, managers can be able to use to drive the objectives of the company and for us to all get successful. This is available to the customers that are on Microsoft 365 subscription. If you are not having access to this, then it means you need the Microsoft 365. And for that, we'd like you to contact our marketing team if need be. I'll hand over to our head of marketing, but uh, for him to wrap up maybe the last two minutes, maybe we try and answer the few, those who want to still do voice questions. For those who are texting, I think we are answering it by, by, by typing it for them. So let's see whether there is any hands up, Ira. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, there were some questions that were coming on the other side, so I'll allow Ira some two, three minutes to just give some insight into that. Uh, I know we cannot exhaust all the questions till the 11.30 that we intend to close. We want to do this very religiously so that we are able to plan. So we'll keep taking questions. Um, most of you, we already have good business with you, so kindly send me an email and we'll come back to you on those responses. Ira, over to you. Okay, thank you, sir. So um, I noticed a few things that may just need a little, a quick demonstration. So um, someone was asking, for instance, if you can copy um, a task or activity. So yes, you can. You come to the particular activity you want to copy. You see the option here to copy the task. So you can do that. And then you can just indicate the plan you want to send it to. So you can move it amongst plans and then the bucket or the grouping you want to add it to. So when you select the plan. And then it gives you the, that particular plans bucket so that you can copy that to it. So that's how you copy a task. Now you can also copy. You've created an entire plan. And then you need to create something similar to it. You don't need to go and create everything from scratch. You also have the option to just create an entire copy of the plan and then you make your changes to it. So you see the option here, the three dots you see here, you see the option to copy the plan and then it gives you the opportunity to add it to a group. And then you can also uh, indicate what it should transfer to the new one that you are created over there. You can also change the name from here. Now I saw a question as well asking if you can change the name of your plan. So yes, you can. You can come to the three dots once again, and then you come to your plan settings, and then you can see the option here to change the name of the plan. Okay. So these are a few things that I have seen here that I think I can answer um, quickly. Yes, I can answer quickly um, from here. I'm just quickly going through some of them to see if there is any other that has. Okay, let me, yeah. let me, 
Let me help, help you, you. Okay. So that so maybe we can read the read question. The question. And yeah. then um, I think there was a question about can API be done? It's been answered uh, by our technical team. And then they say, how do you reassign a task to another person? I think it, maybe that is simply by going to the assign and then changing it. Um, I think Arabia is showing it on the screen. You just cancel whoever was assigned to and then pick the next person that's been assigned to. There's a question that talk about, please, can you duplicate any task to multiple buckets aside dragging and dropping it so that uh, a similar task can be done by different buckets? For example, completing and reviewing. You've answered that? OK, so Arabina has answered that as well. I'm just trying to scroll in from top to down. How do you search for a task? E.g. you have 100 tasks and you want to search for a particular one among them. Arabina, do we have a thing? I think we use a filter, right? And then use a the keyword as you're showing on the screen. You're able to filter and know the activities that are coming up, or you filter by typing the keyword and then it will come to it. Uh, please, can you plan activities to be printed in a report form? On a monthly basis, that's a very extreme question. Please, can you plan activities to be printed in a report form on monthly basis? Report form is a, a, is a complex question. <laughs> OK, you can email it to us. Uh, yeah, I think it can be done. It is uh, as to what format you want it to be. What planner by default allows you to do is when you've created the plan, you can export the plan to Excel. So you see that when you come to your three dots here, you see export plan to Excel. And then that would just more or less just give you that table. Um, let me see if I can just open. I didn't share my whole screen, but it will just give you the table with the various um, activity items and then the buckets and things that that's the most they can do for you for now. Uh, OK, okay. Uh, and so that sounded like digitizing something and then manualizing it again. You know, you put it in a nice planner and you can assign for people to update, but you still want to print and stick it. OK, that is fine. Is it possible to reassign? I think it's been answered. Uh, can the app be a purchase as a standalone version? and add that to the 35 basic account. It's actually part of the Microsoft 35 basic. It's part of the Microsoft 35 basic and Apple. So once you have basic, you have access to it or any other version. Please, can you prevent the deletion of a task by people you assign it to? <laughs> OK, this is a collaboration app. Uh, yeah, we get these questions from time to time. But uh, the thing is that it is only people within the team, the group you have added uh, as a webinar show that can have access to it. So only people within it can delete it. But the good thing is that there's a log. If somebody delete a task, uh, we know this question because sometimes you assign a task to some people and they just want to uh, delete um, it so that they avoid it. The log will show that if they deliberately deleted it. Um, what again is the other question? I think all the questions will be answered. Hey, Rabina, go on. OK. So there was also a question in the beginning about how to assess the planner application. So I mentioned that when you open up your browser and then you can type portal.office.com and then you sign in with your username and your email, um, your username and then your password. That's for those of us who are on the M365 platform. So once you sign in, then it brings you to the landing page. So I came to the apps because I've opened this up already. Pardon me. So I come to the apps area and then I'll see this list of apps here. I can click all apps and then I'll see the planner here. I think there's a shortcut URL that's task tax.office.com. We'll put it in the chat area. Once you do tax.office.com, it will just send you straight to sign in and then it opens up the planner application straight away for you. So that's how to assess it. OK, thank you all very much. And like you said, want to make this um, straight to 45 to one hour so that you can properly schedule this so that we have more of that. And I only want to, in a minute, talk about the culture concerning this whole app. As you realize, if you are a supervisor and you assign roles and people finish the work and don't come back to the app to update it, then the two will not be efficient. So there's that cultural change of how we do work, where people will now be inclined to 
making sure that whatever they do, they go on the planner to update. So thank you all very much for being part of today's masterclass. If there are any key uh, um, apps that you want us to come in and help you appreciate, we normally are not um, set up to be a training company, but uh, depending on the relationship, we can see if we can do something like that for you. But we are trying to let you know the full-blown benefits of the 365, which apart from this app that you have 20 other productivity and collaboration app, there is the information management platform and the corporate intranet platform. And beyond that is the business process automation. So whichever stage of um, digitization you are on the M365 platform, we are able to help you throughout the journey. So thank you all very much for making today a success. And we will send you our next masterclass schedule in the emails. Maybe we can wrap up with some claps. And um, thank you for being a part of today. Bye.